Welcome to the Kiwi Mana Day. Hi, this is episode 121 of our beekeeping show, Vanquish the Varroa. That's right, and we are Gary and Margaret, and we love honeybees. We are Kiwi Mana, and we are beekeepers from the hills of the Wataki Ranges on the wild west coast of Auckland, New Zealand. Yay! Kiwi Mana is a place where the beekeeping community can share a conversation and connect. And in this episode, we talk about... Bummer! Oops, oh, that's a typo, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Bumper, sorry, honey season. Lithium! Lithium. <laughs> is that another option? And prisoners find the buzz. And if that wasn't all, we build and sell beekeeping supplies. We teach beginner beekeepers and we provide beekeeping services and advice. And we are the Bees News Club on Facebook. Yeah, that's us, guys. And uh, yeah, great to have you joining us. We know life is busy for you. So we appreciate you taking time to come and join us again. And uh, yeah, love to hear from you guys. And it's awesome. So thanks for being part of the Kiwi Mana Buzz. That's right, and we've also known to go up on tangents, but that's just part of the show. That's it, guys, so be prepared. Well, it's just turned autumn here, fall for y'all, and here in New Zealand, summer has just started to fade into the autumn, and what happened was that we could see the slight drop in temperature in the mornings, and that slowly brought us to a chillier time, but we're still getting quite high degrees during the day. So still foraging going on. And yeah, we had a few storms pass over the country. Cyclone Gita left flooding, slips and heavy winds. But, uh, you know, we've got some number eight wire, which uh, we dealt with that. That's right. And due to the weather changes has been the bees feeding heavily with starvation is a real risk. That's right. We have lots of reports of that. We talked about it in the newsletter as well. Yeah, and we've still got winter to come. Yes, it's quite windy today, isn't it? It sure is. And another interesting thing that, you know, has come to us is that the gardeners have been talking about that they had their fruit. They had lots of fruit and were really looking forward to harvest time. But what happened is they ripened too quickly and then they got rotten and just died on the plant. It's said that it's due to the high humidity, especially up here in Auckland. So sorry about that, guys. And uh, with, you know, this is what nature's like. Okay, so what's happening at Kiwi Mana? Well, things for me at work are changing, so it's hard fitting everything into my days, having to uh, start with all the uh, nine to five kind of people. Yeah, so we have to think about how we have the time to do the podcast and work for a living. Yes, it's tough juggling all those responsibilities, isn't it, Gary? And um, yeah, I'm sure we'll work through it and find a way. So what else has been going on with you? Um, it's pretty much dominating things at the moment, but the quarantine apiary has been treated with um, auxilic acid, acid vaporization, and they're going good. I've got to go and do that again this weekend. And I've been using organic weed spray around the Kiwamana HQ and doing some weed trimming. So we're trying to get our driveway sorted out for winter. So what's your your schedule when you're doing the oxalic acid vaporization? How do you do yours? I do it for four weeks, one week uh, and every week for four weeks. Okay. And what other things do you do? Because we're talking about vanquishing the Varroa this week. I also use drone management frames. Yeah, that's it really. So what does a drone management frame do? It vanquishes the Varroa. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a capture device. Well, what it does is it, 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 it gives the bees a space that's empty and they build comb in there. And generally what they'll do is they'll build drone comb. So when they build drone comb and it's capped, I just cut it out and give it, put it in the wax extractor. But what's the purpose of it? Oh, because drone comb is very attractive to varroa mites because of the longer gestation period. So it attracts more varroa mites. And if you open up your drone cells, you'll see lots of, probably usually lots of varroa mites. And that will give you a really good indication of what's happening in the cells. And then what other ways, there's um, other ways to check for varroa is on walking bees. And what method would you use for that, Gary? Oh, well, I use a sugar shake method where I, I gather a half a cup of bees, which is 300 bees. And I measure the varroa fall off with icing sugar. 
And we've got a video on our YouTube channel, haven't we, about how to do that. We'll include that in the show notes. And you've got one for the vaporization method as well. That's, I, a, that's a classic one, eh? That's a classic comedy, that one. <laughs> Oh, there's there's more there's more funny ones than that. But yeah, no, it's all good. And um, the sugar shake one's quite good. Yeah, I, if the count goes over three, then I treat. Okay, so the um, organic weed spraying. How did that progress? It seems to be going good. There's a lot of dead a lot of dead uh, weeds in the in the driveway, so it's awesome. You're trying to get that all cleared up before um, winter sets in, eh? Yep. Okay, so moving on with what's happening at Kiwi Mana, I have been doing work in the, all the apries and um, the education apiary had only four capped frames of honey from the older queen colony with the rest not yet capped so they're sort of partially capped and full of nectar but not full capping at the stage so I think once that temperature during the day drops as well we might get some more capping going on but it's very frustrating because I only like to take honey frames off that are completely capped I don't like to have any nectar in my uh, extractions. No, that's very dangerous because sometimes you have, um, I've heard of honey jars exploding. Wow. Because the nectar's got a lot of water in it, it actually ferments and becomes mead and the extra extra air uh, breaks open the glass. Wow, I've never heard that. Seriously, I've never heard that before. That's very interesting, Gary. You're just full of a lot of stuff like that, aren't you? Yep. Well, you, you try it. Try and you try and get some nectar that it's not been capped with a lot of water in it, and put it in a jar and see what happens. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll um, try as an experiment. Yeah, someone can try that at home. Just make sure it's nice and safe, and you don't harm anybody. Because I so, remember when I used to make beer, if you didn't have that right, it would uh, it would explode. Wow, that's interesting. Well, watch this. You know, beware, folks. Ha! <laughs> I mean, yes, beware. Okay, so um, the new season orange Italian queen, which has come from that that older honey queen, uh, older honey queen, uh, I mean the older queen, um, has done really well. She's got eight frames fully capped. They're three quarter. She had another box on underneath that, which is full of nectar and partial capping. So they are going to have plenty of honey for winter. And the other new season queen is actually a, a very dark queen and she is not as prolific and no tr- no capped honey for her at all. There's some nectar frames, but looks like we might have to yeah, look at what she's going to be like in the next few weeks and see what action we'll take with that. But I'll keep you posted on that, guys, and see what happens. Okay, Gary, well, um, that was at the Education Apri and now moving on to Kiwimana HQ. We've got the Langstroth Colony, which was the garage rooftop swarm colony, and that one only had one capped honey frame. The rest is not capped. There's plenty of nectar, but just not capped yet, and I don't like to take it off unless it's been, you know, properly capped. And I'm aiming for them to have 10 honey frames for winter. Yes, always have a lot of honey for winter. Okay, and then we've got the seven frame hive box colony, which was a nucleus that I got a bit earlier on in the season, and that one has four boxes, so effectively 28 full depth frames, and I have to still fully check it. The last time I checked, there was heaps of nectar, but not capped fully. So I'll be checking that next week. And the smaller nucleus colonies are not amazing, not really doing a heck of a lot so yeah the other swarm colony which was it's not doing amazingly either but they look like they've actually just started building up in the last couple of weeks because I've seen more bees outside so I'll look at them to see if they need expansion and for us here in New Zealand we still have being autumn we've still got a few months where we will probably get some quite a bit of activity as the girls notice the temperatures drop but not sure what to do with the smaller colonies but um, decided that I would start rehousing them to the lifestyle along bench hive we have. And I've got two of those, and so I'm going to put two colonies in each one and run them over autumn and winter and see how they go. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah, that's a plan, Stan. Okay, and uh, yeah, what should you be doing with your bees in New Zealand today, Gary? Well, treating, if you treat, and preparing for population declines. 
probably looking at in the next month or so start reducing them down. Maybe look at the entrance reducing as well because you're going to get robbing. Well, robbing's starting, eh? Yeah, people are already buying the robbing screens because it just gives the girls an extra line of defense and then you can reduce behind the robbing screens as well. But when I do reduction behind the robbing screens, I don't do it so it's exactly in the middle. And the reason for that, it's very easy for a, a threat to go in to the through the robbing screen, then go straight down into the hive. So I put it a bit to the side. So the guard bees are more likely to be able to manage it better if it's to the side and that's not what that, that wasp will be expecting or the robbing bee. Just a little hint there, guys. Got some winter reading too, I've got to mention. Okay. I got a new book from uh, James too. Oh, it's called Beekeeper's Problem Solver. The 100 Common Problems. Well, you'll have to give us some feedback on that once you've had a look. I will read it over winter, but first impression, nothing mentioned about robbing. (laughs) First impression, got lots of photos, and I love pictures. It's a nice book. (laughs) Yeah, I'll read that, and I'll get back to everybody and see what I think. In the UK, they're seeing lots of snow. They had a had a record snowfall, didn't they, because of some Arctic storm happening last week. So yeah, it's awful. hope everyone's okay. Yeah, we've seen quite a few um, things on the Facebooks regarding that. And in the USA, we've seen some great footage from the Facebooks. Hives already starting to go out and forage, and even the snow is deep. In the southern states, like in like you know, in southern states and California, I've, I've even heard of swarming starting to happen. So. Yeah, a lot of breeding stuff is starting now too. So, uh, yeah, well, we wish you guys all the best. And what we do at this time of the year is get all our gear ready and start um, checking for drones laying in preparation and do some assessing of the hives before, but only if the temperature's okay. And uh, you had a comment uh, from our last newsletter that they were surprised that our bees forage at 14 degrees because... Over in the States and the UK, they probably wouldn't go out at all if it was up to 14 degrees. So it's interesting, isn't it? Different countries, microclimates, local climates, everything like that definitely causes some challenges. But that's nature. So we have to be ready to to be adaptable, eh, Dale? Yep, that's right. So that's all good. So what's next, Gary? Put my guitar down. Yeah, top oh, good three. Good on ya. Good on ya. <laughs> top three blog post you chose last month. Number one, beekeeping bonanza. That was our last show. So thanks everyone that's downloaded that one. Episode one one nine. That was number one, guys. Thank you for that. And the second one was released last week. I'm the Yappy Bee Man, removing bees in Alabama. Wow, it's already in second place. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> And the last one was the bonus show that goes out to the patrons. Thanks, everyone, for downloading that. That's episode 119B. That's it, the bonus bonanza. Well, that little extra for our patrons. That's right. What products have you used in your work? Well, it's kind of like equipment or stuff that I have to use you know, because the season's changing at the moment. So let's start with what you've been using, Gary. Well, I've been using the vaporizer. Um, what else have I been using? You used your smoker. I saw that. Yeah. You're showing off on how long that smoker kept keep, smoking. That's right. <laughs> smoking. Goes for hours and hours and hours. Yes. <laughs> must do a video about that. How we do it. <laughs> yeah, I think you should. It's actually, a lot of people don't know how to do that, so that would be a good one. So Easy. we'll work on that later, you get, eh? get better at it. <laughs> you get better at it, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so I've been doing that, and also I, there's a, I posted a photo of Vermont on some comb the other day on Instagram, and that was very popular, so that was interesting. Yeah, I like the way that you made people have a look at it, because one guy said that was AFB on it. Yeah. And that raised a whole lot of questions. We were asked if we had AFB in our apiary because someone nearby had had AFB confirmed. And we, we had talked about that in a few newsletters. 
that our area had been affected by AFB, but actually at the moment AFB is everywhere. And and I, my my response to the comment was whether we had AFB was to say that our all our apiaries are running good at the moment. We're checking them always for brood health, regardless of what's showing on the old internet AFB map. Because we feel it's it's an integral part of what we do is checking the brood health. So we're always checking it. And the other things that checking brood health can also lead you to determine whether you've got issues with Varroa because you can get sac brood and PMS because the health of the hive diminishes. So checking brood is very important. And AFB is a reportable uh, uh, issue so you must report it if you find it but so far so good guys yeah touch wood we've had none this year this this season last Mm -hmm. season we lost one april didn't we yeah that was about a year ago now it was it's almost two seasons ago wasn't it? yeah pretty much anyway we did talk about it and we do like to talk about afb because you know it's something that happens to all beekeepers at some stage and if you don't ever have it happen um, then I think that uh, you're lucky. You're very lucky, but you need to be able to identify it. In New Zealand, here we have to burn our hives if we get AFB, so it's quite traumatic, especially when you've been looking after your girls and you you lose them. Well, and expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so your gear and stuff. It's it's terrible. Be very proactive, guys, and consider it crucial as part of your beekeeper management to inspect for any kind of ill health in your colonies and don't be shy about it just do it you know get some if you're if you're just new maybe get someone who's more experienced come in and have a look so uh yeah oh okay was that the tangent (laughs) okay what products have i been using well basically my back i'm not sure if that's a product a lot of lifting and manipulating the nectar frames to try and encourage the girls to cap. And I'm I'm finding that they're generally capping the very top frames first, which I thought was really interesting. That's what I found. And my frame holder's been a real awesomeness because it's allowing me to hold the hold the frames well it holds the frames for me. So it allows me to be able to move and change things around. So um and the step ladder because the colony is so high and a storage container for putting my honey frames on, you know, after I've taken them off the hive so the bees don't go mental. So the so, bees have so been going gonna, mental. When are we going to extract that honey? Uh, I'm working on that this week. Okay. So Sounds good. Hope to have something, that, but we won't be able to have it until I've had all the tests done, so I'll be sending them off to get tested. Absolutely, and we talked about that in the last newsletter about places you can go, and New Zealand is a place called Hills Laboratories, you can get your honey tested. Yeah, and another one, no, Anna. No affiliation to us, but. No, uh, yeah. no, nothing to do with us, and Analytica is another one that seems to be popping up. All if, good. If you're extracting after the end of January, guys, no, end of December, is that right? In New Zealand, end of December, then you need to get your honey tested just for the safety of your friends and family and yourself. <laughs> yes, and did you hear the latest news that a hunter was hunting last week and he ate some berries from the Tutan bush and he got very sick? Oh, man. So it's uh, not a good plant to eat when you're hunting. No, it's not. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. So thanks, guys. Let's see what's next. <laughs> Beekeeping news, news you cannot lose. That's it. And this and, piece. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so enthusiastic today. This piece of news was brought to you by one of our patrons, Chris Brown. Yes, indeed. This podcast was made possible by our, all our patrons, especially this month. We'd like to thank Chris Brown. Chris has been supporting the Kiwi Mata Buzz since October 2016. And we hope all is well in Brit Mana despite the snow. And hello to Laura, Jasper, and of course, Maggie. Thanks for the support, Chris and Laura. Yeah, keep warm, and uh, we look forward to hearing how your season goes. Yes, absolutely. And hopefully your winter has not been as bad as our winters have been in the past. Yeah. Okay, the first story. Good honey crop expected in New Zealand after dismal 2017. I thought you were going to say bummer. 
Bummer 2017. That, that joke's been done. Oh, okay. A story about the bump. Bump. Oh, now I'm going to say it. A story <laughs> about the bumper honey season in New Zealand has been has been having. Let's hope the Northern Hemisphere has a similar season coming yeah, into. Yeah, I reckon. And quoting from the article, the five billion dollar a year honey New Zealand industry is on the way to recovery after one of the poorest seasons in decades last year. And we talked about that last year, didn't we? Yeah, it was pretty dismal. That's for sure. It was a real bummer. <laughs> It was, and uh, some talking points here. It's a $5 billion industry with 7,836 registered beekeepers. Wow. I mean, since we first started, there wasn't even, I think there wasn't even like 1,500 beekeepers or something, eh? Exactly. Wow. But that leads me to ponder. Ponder? Their last show, Beekeeping Bonanza, only got listened to by 4% of all the beekeepers in New Zealand. Come on, guys. Where are you all? Yeah. Tell your other beekeeping friends about us. Please, <laughs> please be a, become a patron. Help us do this work and support our project work. That'll be awesome. But if you're if you're a New Zealand listening to this, what, what can we do to make the show better for New Zealanders? I don't know. We need to find out. Anyway, in 2017, is was one of the worst in decades. The bee season, it was the last season from the... Yeah, this one mating was really bad, and there, there was the nosema that happened at the end of that season, the you know the the end of the season before, which really ruined a lot of the bee season twenty seventeen, didn't it? So that was really um, tough, I think, and the breeding was pretty bad. So this year has been awesome. Yes, and John Rawcliffe from UMF Honey is saying that the new testing regime for Manuka honey and also the UK trademark registration has been made. There have been major milestones in the industry this season, so it's awesome. If you go to the show notes, that's kiwi.bz slash 121, you can read that article. Awesomeness. And what was the feedback on that one? None. So None. Probably everyone has been out extracting. <laughs> They've all been in the apiary busy. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Okay, so next one we go on to is, have you lithium chlorided your bees yet? A okay. paper has been published in Germany that hints as to the possible use of lithium chloride to treat bees. The study is in the early days and Kiwi Mana doesn't recommend it at this stage, do we? Yes, I would uh, tread very lightly. The, you know, the reaction is immediately that <laughs> it's very harmful. Let's talk about it then. So the quote from the article is, rather than fumigating an entire hive to kill varroa, bees uptake lithium salts later when the mites suck bee hemolymph, they get poisoned. And there's a couple of articles about this. There's one from uh, from Ron from the Bad Beekeeping blog and also one from Rusty from Honey Bee Street. So we've kind of combined these two articles together and here's what we've come up with. This was first published in June 2017 in Germany. And I've got the link there to the full paper, which is worth reading, eh? Yeah, I think so. Have a have a look at it, guys. It, I mean, the thing is, is I don't know. I don't think they've proven it enough. No. Well, the, the shocking thing to me is the lifespan of a working bee, when they use this treatment, that at the doses that it's effective to kill varroa mites, it reduces the working bee's life to 19 days. So it's knocking the bee's life in half, basically, isn't it? Absolutely. And that, I don't know, it's bad enough. I mean, even sugar syrup's been proven to reduce the lifespan of a bee, you know. So oh, I don't know. I, I'm i sticking with my oxalic acid vaporization. The other problem, I think, with this, overdosing would, would be a huge problem and I reckon would result in colony deaths because people can't measure stuff into, you know, into small amounts. And just imagine if you make a mistake. God, blimey. Well, you just kill your hive, wouldn't you? Well, just kill your hive? Sheesh. I know. And um, this is similar to mo- to flea treatments that are on the market at the moment that kill, they add poison to the animal's bloodstream yeah. and uh, kill the fleas that way, don't they? Which is probably not a good idea either. No, I think a lot of this stuff is just not natural. So, you know, I like to stick with the plant-based ones because I think that they're the ones more likely to be part of what the bees do in a lot of ways anyway. Yeah, and both Ron and Rusty advise not to do any backyard experiments with lithium, and they, they're saying at the moment I would stay clear away from this. There's still much work to be done, so yeah. Rusty from Honey Bee Sweet. I agree, and the thing is, is in New Zealand, 
you're only allowed to use the ones that are prescribed or are approved, should I say, by the government. So Ministry for Primary Industries does tell you what you can and can't, well, it only tells you what you can use. Ones like this that are being checked out are not part of the equation at this stage, so don't do it, guys. Avoid it. Well, this is similar to the EPA in America where they, they designate what treatments can be used. Because, I mean, ex- oxalic acid's only basically been approved like the last couple of years in America, isn't it? They were using – weren't they using it in Canada from 2000 or something? Canada is not America. I know, but I mean, it's that side of the world where they were making the the vaporization tools and oh, everything yeah, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah, Canada were. Yeah. So um, different countries, though. Yeah, well, even different states, as I understand, over in America. So, but Canada definitely has been using it, and yeah, that's been a godsend, I reckon. That oxalic acid. Okay, let's move on to feedback. We've got from Paul Jamad Silva from Portugal. I got that right this time. Thanks, Paul, for all your comments. Why would someone use the latest poison on the bees without proper testing and risking killing bees and contaminating the honey? It's beyond my best comprehension. Here, I agree. Here. I agree. And Don McLeod, he's quite sort of a famous scientist in New Zealand. He says, Gary, you should be very careful advocating an unregistered treatment such as lithium chloride. There is no evidence in the paper that residue studies have been conducted on the honey, wax or propolis in the treated hive. This lack of testing is noted in the paper. The high toxicity of lithium is known. Just find a report of children swallowing a lithium battery. Google child swallows lithium battery and you will be surprised of the consequences. Take care, mate. What's your response to that? Our response is we're not recommending it. Neither does Ron if you read the article. Yes, stick with what is legal and what works. Shared this. We shared this with people to start their own research. I think that's the key, you know, a lot of the stuff we share, um, we are not promoting the use of lithium at all. So just let's be very clear on that. Do you like that? Be very clear on that, that we are not. No, we, we are just sharing this information as we do with many things that come up. To to ignite a conversation in the community, isn't it? That's, that's what we right, do. to create a conversation. And even Ron replied, because Ron wrote the article. Ron Miksha? Yep. Don, if you have a chance, please read the story at the link and you will see that the answer is to, to have you lithium, lithium chlorinated your bees yet is I hope not. In that piece, you'll see some possible problems with treatment, with testing on dosage and safety protocols. It may be a great treatment, but not yet. I agree. Okay, I don't know if it's ever going to be a good one because if it harms the life of a bee, uh, it's not for me. No, I don't, I don't think I'd be using it. The industry is desperately trying to find things that work. I mean, but oxalic acid works. Yeah, but Just are saying. you going to are you going to cause a degeneration in the quality of the life of the bee and the health of the colony to achieve that? And the answer is yes, as long as they can get the money going behind it. It's like a Bavarol or a Appy stan or whatever, you pay lots of money for these treatments and long term they just don't work and are causing more issues than we want to deal with. So go natural, guys. That's right. And Linus Merchant says, do the bees have bipolar or anxiety? They will after this. And I says, I hope not, but bees do get depressed. Especially the queen. I've seen that. And Stephen Stewart, lithium carbonate from the research also works, an added bonus mood suppressant. Yeah, but is that for humans? Oh, I please. Don't, I don't know. Please, guys, just be wary of this. Yeah, and also... Just think long term, the big picture of nature and the health of the world. Just think about that before you start doing this kind of thing. Well, I don't recommend anyone should use this at the moment until they've till the research has been completed. Well, even if the research gets completed, I still feel that well, they might. If it harms the life of a bee, then it's not it's not a treatment for me and my girls. Well, that's right, but you can't make that decision until the research. I has can, been and I have. Okay, moving on, and another one that connects from the story we've just been covering is from Rusty. What does she say, Gary? She says, people who have never heard of a millimole are mixing this stuff up on their kitchen counters with measuring cups and teaspoons. This is insanity. 
And she highly recommends don't use this yet until the research has been completed. So, and this, this her article is more about the scientific study. It's called Treat Your Bees But Hold the Lithium. And she recommends caution. So do we, after reading Absolutely, this. guys. Okay, we didn't. We did get some feedback on that, Gary. And what does Lyle have to say? Lyle Kins, I'm so glad someone in a place that can be heard has said it and said it so eloquently. Well yes. done. Good, good, <laughs> good work, Rusty. And what does Stephen Stewart say? Oh, always with the quick jabs. Are they depressed? Should be with Varroa, I suppose. <laughs> well, whenever we get the flu, we do really... You know, that viral flus are very bad, and I feel a bit depressed myself, but I haven't had a flu for a while. No. And uh, I responded to Stephen, I'm going to wait and see on this one. Anyway, exilic acid is working for us at the moment. I agree. Because I said it. I agree with myself. Alan Johnson, he says, it's another s- string to our bow if this works. Yeah, if. Yeah, if is the big question. And I'm not Alan. using it. Margaret has spoken. <laughs> Let's move no, on to the Margaret next has, topic. No, Margaret has passionately expressed her opinion. Margaret should wait for the scientific report. Margaret to should do what Margaret feels <laughs> is right. Okay, the next story. This is another passionate topic. Prison beekeeping course helps inmates turn lives around. This is from Brian Alexander, a local Auckland man we've met, haven't we? He is teaching prisoners in Auckland Maximum Security Prison And we did cover the story uh, last year about his work in a woman's prison. So this is sounds like this is men now. So what's the quote say, Dale? Auckland inmates have been learning how to become beekeepers, and while they're surrounded by swarms of flying insects, they're not in the least bit phased. Phased. Oh, wow. That's good. I I think it's important. If You know, we want to help people uh, find themselves. I think bees are actually quite extraordinary in helping us do that. Okay, let's play the sound introduction so we can hear what what the news said. Yes, says. sir. Prisoners in Auckland's Paremo Remo have been learning the art of beekeeping. Bridget Grace went along to the graduation ceremony and found out the inmates are reaping a range of rewards. <laughs> They're surrounded by swarms of bees, but not in the least bit phased. Let's give them a little bit of smoke. It's just lovely to be able to teach something that you're passionate to people who want to learn and just absorb everything that you can give them. Brian Alexander's been beekeeping for 40 years, and for the last one and a half years, he's been passing that knowledge on to prisoners. Their school level is really good. I'm so proud of them. Well, that's awesome, isn't it? That's great, and it's good to have things to look forward to and things to do. It gives you, like, real purpose, doesn't it? And um, I feel that the beekeeping has given that to me. Yes, absolutely. You know, we've got lots of feedback. Okay, Ryan Clark says, and this is why we have a problem with hives getting stolen. Oh, okay. okay. Cynical, but I don't know. Summer Sunshine. It's a great name. Yeah, that's awesome. You are my sunshine, my own. Oh, sorry. Yes, you should I'm, be. I'm so sorry to stereotype, but that was my for- first thought as well. Oh, come on, Summer Sunshine. You should be more positive with a name like that. <laughs> and Sam Gray says that's not the only reason why hives get stolen, but each to their own. Yes, voice of reason, Sam says. Chris Mitchell says hives were getting stolen in serious numbers long before any of these programs started. If some of these people can get back into society and live positively, then we'd all be better off. It's not junior learner beekeepers who have been stealing entire apiaries. Indeed, that, that there's a whole different thing going on, but I just think it is wonderful. And, and yeah, we can be a bit cynical, but let's not be, eh? Let's be positive. We need more positive vibes in the world, guys. Okay, Judy Nipmeyer says, Chris Mitchell, I agree. It is the judgmental attitude of others that makes it hard for ex-prisoners to find work, which then leads to desperation and reoffending. Of course, there are the ones that never learn, but there are plenty of prisoners who can turn their lives around if they are only given a chance. Yeah, hear, hear. Absolutely. And Stephen Stewart comes back with E incumbent Probata ki dick non cu negate. That's uh, Latin. Or in simple terms. Innocent until proven guilty. Why don't I just say that instead of that long winded thing? <laughs> I See, love that, it. This is why I Latin, love it. This is why Latin died. 
too, too they spoke too long. <laughs> okay, and Matthew Jordan, if someone wants to steal hives, they will. At least that this will teach people that they can turn their lives around again. Some of the stealing people who know what they're doing, if they keep going doing it, they'll get caught up eventually. Yeah, that's the way it is, you know. And Stephen Stewart says, The bee robber steals the life of a few and we condemn. Financial systems fail, costing trillions through corruption and greed, and we promote the perpetrators. It's an odd system. <laughs> and Thanks. what's this quote, Gary? Quoting the great Woody Guthrie. This is from uh, Pretty Boy Floyd's song. Some men rob you with a six gun, others rob you with a fountain pen. Yes, that's true, Stephen, and uh, I agree. Yeah, the late, great Woody Guthrie had a lot to say, and I think that... uh, He was talking about bankers stealing stealing people's farms, wasn't he? He was good in his day. He was bringing those kind of things to, you know, music, making people aware. Absolutely. Kiwi Mana Buzz. (laughs) Reg Dragon says, seriously, some of you are very naive. Probably. We're we're dreamers. You know, imagine a world with no troubles. Imagine a world where everyone gets together. Yeah, imagine a world. Imagine all the people (laughs) living (laughs) for the. Let's move on. Tom Le Fleming. Very cheap to get started in beekeeping when you're out of prison. <laughs> oh, cheap. You mean it's a really cheap way? No, I it's, hope not. It's a cheap way, but it's not the right way. But there you go. Craig Grimshaw says, now that's what I like to see. Our trust wants to expand this initiative further as well. Well, good on you, Craig. Cool Kiwi Mana. Absolutely. And Red Dragon, or Red Dragon as he's known, <laughs> rocks in the head. Okay. 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 Right then. Chris Mitchell, the weather is too hot for Tim Tams unless they're in the fridge freezer. Well, that's a good one. I love that. That's a tangent one. Oh, I I think I get that. He watched a video and they had like Tim Tams. Yeah. Awesomeness. Yeah. Awesomeness. And what does Judy say? The good old Tim Tams. And Margaret says, indeed. (laughs) And Dave Spart says, Brian is a local to me. Legend. Awesome. Sarah, oh, awesome. Sarah Grayson says, this is an excellent initiative that will open employment opportunities. Good on you, Sarah. Nice chatting to you the other day. Yes, and Paul Jamard Silva says, beekeeping has the power to change lives and makes us more humble. Seeing such small insects doing incredible things is wonderful. Incredible smart things, Gary. Yes, I really hope that every prison gives the chance to for inmates to try beekeeping at least once in their lives. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Oh, I reckon. I think it's a great thing. And, you know, I think bees teach us things as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so Roderick Rouseabout says, I heard a funny story from an Auckland beekeeper at last year's conference. The program was so successful, one inmate following his release went from no hives to 30 hives in a week. Turned out he was stealing them. (laughs) Crikey dicks. That's that's no good. (laughs) Okay, that's one side of the story. So um, Robin McGillrath says, will it be straight back to jail if caught stealing hives after doing the course? (laughs) I'd say so. Yes, I'd say so. So Jennifer Furnicane says... Except that some people having done this course now know how to steal hives and not lose the bees. Bees are so expensive in New Zealand and the gear to keep them. Mm. Well, yes, yes it is. The gear is expensive, but if you choose Kiwi Mana, we're very competitive. That's it. And we have really good quality hive, hive boxes, that's for sure, and they last really well. Anyway, um, tangent, Maria... <laughs> Maria Moselin says, wow. And April Lemon says, awesome, with a kiss. There you awesome. Go. Thanks, what everyone. a way to end that one. <laughs> Thanks for all your feedback, guys. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Next story. This next article is Jara and Mari Honey, a liquid gold rush of medical benefits. What's happening on a little island in Western Australia called Rotnest? You know, I wasn't going to make any comments about the name of the island, okay? <laughs> Is it really called Rotnest? It's called Rotnest. But Rot anyway, Nest okay. okay, and just saying, notice in this article that the tests were originally done in where? New Zealand. New Zealand. But let's see what the Aussies are up to in this article. Okay, 
Quoting from the article, it says, Independent testing of Jara and Mari honey in New Zealand in 2016 found that it had stronger antimicrobial properties than the much prized Manuka honey. The Chem Centre's principal food scientist, Ken Dodds, said some of the Western Australia samples had 30% higher activity than Manuka. He goes on to say, Jara and Mari honey, because of the nature of the activity that we have, which is a peroxide-based activity, actually has quite a broad-spectrum antimicrobial activity, Mr. Dodd said. And what's the next part of the article? I, I thought I'd include a bit more in this one because it's quite a big article. Okay. Well, Australia was one of the only places where the parasite has not taken hold. I'm, I'm talking, thinking he's talking about Varroa. And the CRC could use cutting-edge proteus mix to study varroa resistant bees discovered in Brazil and Africa. Dr. Barber said researchers could investigate resistance without exposing any bees to the varroa mite. Okay. Sounds so this is interesting. So what they do is they're talking about the honey and the testing on the island, right? Yeah. And they're t- talking about this testing. And then they go on to talk about using about varroa mites. And then they're talking about how they can do it on this island because it's it's quite a distance from the mainland. And um, so if you want to breed up resistance in a population, you have to expose it to the disease. But varroa is not a disease, Dr. No. Barber. It also means that the bees won't build resistance to it because resistance is not a thing that happens in the bees. It's actually of their behavior that can um, manage it. But anyway, they go on. There's a new way of doing this that scientifically and actually to look at the problem profile of a bee that is resistant. The protein profile of a bee. Oh, sorry, the protein profile of a bee that is resistant. Thanks, Gary. And instead of us actually exposing the bee to the disease, we look for those protein profiles and then we start breeding those bees up. And of course, the big advantage is we have one of the oldest breeding programs here in Western Australia. So they're looking at um, studying resistance bees for varroa at the same stage. Yeah, they're trying to, to do some work with that on the same island. So they've got all these things going on in this island. It's a really long article, but you will really enjoy this article, guys. It's got lots in it. Rottenest <laughs> Island. It's not Rottenest <laughs> Island. It's Rottenest <laughs> Island, Western Australia. Is so it? read that article, guys. And we do have some comments. Is that where the, the Rottenest monster lives? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and what feedback have we got? Well, we've got one from Peter Miller. The only problem is that Jara is so unreliable for nectar flow. We've had had two bad years in a row. Last season it flowered late and we didn't even get a kilo off, only just enough to keep the bees fed. Red gum, Mara, on the other hand, is quite good flow, but usually flowers every second year. Oh, that's interesting. So he, he must be a, a beekeeper in Australia. and so Wonderful. Oh, so it's it's hard. It doesn't doesn't flower every year. So that's yeah, that's hard to make an industry out of it, isn't it? Yeah, and you do get that in New Zealand with some of the native um, trees as well. So, um, and going on, what does Julie say? They had to beat us with something, given the opposition to the theft of the word manuka. Smiley, <laughs> smiley face. Okay, well, thanks, Peter and Julie. Great comments, and uh, yeah, it's a really interesting article. And she talks about the varroa as a disease. And as I said, I wonder what her hypothesis will be um, when we're talking about that in terms of doing the lithium side of things as well. So anyway, I, however, so like the fact that they are intending to address the risk factors, which leads me to wonder what the following folks in this next article are doing regarding risks. Yeah, but before we move on, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's that that's awesome news from Western Australia about that honey, and I think they should market it like crazy. I do, I think, but they also there's like they talk about the risks that are involved and how they're going to manage those risks. So I think that's really great, and uh, yeah, we wish them all the best on that one. Absolutely. And the next story is the Otago Bees Limited honey plant set to start production in Alexandra. Okay, and Alexandra is in the in the South Island. And this article does make me wonder about overpopulating areas with bee population risks of spreading disease. So that was really where my concerns were coming from. Anyway, 
read this article, but we've taken some quotes and Mr. this is one from Mr. Greaves. He would not say how much the plant cost. He's talking about the honey plant, but he said that he thought it would be the biggest in central Otago. It would be capable of processing a ton of honey an hour and at the peak of the season would hopefully process about 10 tons a day. It would process not only Otago bees honey, but honey from other beekeeping firms. Wow, so that's 10 hours a day. I hope you're paying guys overtime. Yeah, I reckon. And Mr. Graves goes on to say another development for Otago bees was the start of pollination services using some of its 3,500 hives. Demand for pollination services was increasing because of increased orchard plantings in central Otago and the demise of the wild bee population, he said. That's because of, is that because of rye mites? Probably is, isn't it? Pretty much. Linda's Honey co-owner Tim Wood said demand for pollination services from his firm was also increasing partly because of increased cherry plantings in central Otago, but also because of increased carrot seed planting by farmers in the Lindus region. So that's awesome. Okay, so um, I think it's naive to think that the there, there will not be a spread of diseases and risks of AFB spread and varroa as well. Um, so I think it should be considered as part of the work that they're doing. So I think that they need to address that a bit more openly so that as part of their best practice in beekeeper hygiene and that kind of thing is, is uh, something I think that needs to be aware of. But didn't hear anything about that in this article. But it's just, it's a great news article, Dale. It's about a new plant opening. It's fantastic news for the I area. Know, I know, I know. I I. Yeah, I applaud don't, that. Don't be but so I th- negative. I'm not being negative. I think it's good. It's <laughs> Anybody will tell you that when you're dealing with livestock, you get dead stock. That's so true. So the only way to prevent dead stock is by having good management. Absolutely. And I'm hoping that I'm sure they will. Yeah, okay. Thanks for that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Okay, let's try and move on to the next section. If the problem continues. For the beers, I don't know if that would have made it. Okay, the new section. What's your number one beekeeping problem? This is when people will join our newsletter. We ask them, what's your number one beekeeping problem? We try and help them with that problem. And here's this month's one. This is from Denise Saunders, and she says, is whether to dive in or do this. My husband tells me he's highly allergic to bee stings, but he loves honey. Not sure I want to go it alone. Okay, Denise, wow. wow. I've got my ideas. Mm, it's a quandary, isn't it? So how it's does a quandary. One, how does one approach such a quandary, Gary? Well, I think he, when he says he's allergic, does he mean he's anaphylactic shock, I'm going to die if I get a bee sting, or does he mean he gets a, a red lump, which is normal? If, if it's anaphylactic shock and he's going to die if he gets a bee sting within 10 minutes, get bees but don't keep them at home. Keep them in another area and then make sure you make sure you always wash your bee suit Somewhere else, that's what I would say. Make sure you don't have any bees in the car when you come home. Okay, some good points there. And I think on your beekeeping adventures, having help when you're beekeeping will make your beekeeping more enjoyable and achievable. And it's a great conversation thing between you and so much interesting stuff to learn and discover. So I think maybe a team decision is required. And what would be the best approach for this potentially life-threatening scenario? I think you first need to assess that life-threatening scenario. So assess whether there's an allergic response by going to a professional guy who can run skin tests and they can report on your level of response to um, certain things to establish what your next step would be. So first assess his response, as, as Gary was saying. Got to find out you know, how bad that is for him. Okay, and the next one is consider getting full bee suits and proper gloves so that you are covered. If you go ahead with getting the bees, then that's a good part of it. So if he's helping you and lifting stuff, he he is covered, well covered. Also, depending on the levels of his response to a sting, have an EpiPen uh, available and some antihistamines and creams at the ready. And if you have an EpiPen, you need to learn how to use it. That's it. That'll all come in your first aid kit. And the fourth one that I've got here is locate the nearest hospital and 
finally, take an emergency response driver's course. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if um, an emergency is that. Are you still allowed to drive like really fast? <laughs> I like to drive at the speed of one hundred. You, you need to buy an ambulance. I mean, to be honest, Denise. If if he's anaphylactic shock, I wouldn't even consider getting bees at home. It's just because sometimes things happen, like you get robbing situations. He gets, you know, he might the bees might fly into the window more than they would normally. I, I just wouldn't risk it, to be honest. Yeah, I think, and if you do want to help the bees, you know, there's always the the continuing um, adage that if you can't if you can't have bees, plant some trees and flowers. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or as I said at the beginning, if you if you can find someone like a farmer that wants bees but doesn't want to manage them, you could put your bees there and just. But as you say, you kind of want someone to help you. But yeah, that's hard. I, I guess so. You could get like a bee if you get involved in the local bee club. You might be able to meet you know beekeeping friends that can help help out and stuff. Or the other way is if if it's about weight, you can always get long bench hives like our Kiwi Lifestyler, which are a lot easier to lift because you're only lifting one frame at a time. Yeah, and that gives you 12, 12 months of beekeeping in one box, basically, and you remove your honey as it, it starts to be capped, and you do your splits in there and everything. So there is no heavy lifting with that, and, yeah, that's that's very achievable. So um, Absolutely. A, so thanks for, yeah. your, thanks for reporting your problem. Yeah, thanks, Denise, and all the best with whatever you decide, and, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. So if you've got a beekeeping problem, tell us at kiwi.bz. Slash N U M O N E. That's it. Or leave a message on SpeakPipe. It's on the left hand, the right hand side of our website. You can record a message for us. And if you've got any urgent questions, join our Bees Knees Facebook group. That's at beesknees.club on the internet. Yeah, or pop us an email or give us a call, but not at the moment because our phone lines are in trouble. (laughs) They are dead. Okay, let's move on. Do, do, do. Oh, Gee, oh, that finished. was that was pretty awesome and loud, Gary. Yep, that's cool. a guy called Kevin plays guitar. Awesome. Okay, feedback from you guys. We had a new Patreon this month. Thanks so much to Gilbert Co for becoming one of our supporters. We appreciate that. Yep. Thanks so much, Gilbert. Awesome. We're so pleased to have you as part of our um, support team. And uh, you have been quietly supporting us, but this is awesome. Thank you so much. That's right. Okay, this month's bonus show. This is the bonus show for our patrons. So, Gilbert, we will be able to listen to this this month. In this week's show, we talk about the 100 hives of vandalism in Pr- Prunedale in California and also mass bee poisoning in Murchison down in the South Island. So, yeah, some not very positive stories that week. Anyway, I used to the, well, yeah. the first one's pretty positive and you'll, you'll have to listen to the show to uh, see why. Yeah, and this bonus, the extra buzz, is exclusively for our patrons. So if you want to be one of them, Easy to do. Yep. Join gonna... Patreon the application, and then you can choose if you want to give a dollar a month. Awesome. Absolutely. So if you want to support us, go to kiwi.bz slash banana. And we'd appreciate that. We absolutely would, it, guys. It and keeps the buzz going. It does. Bonus show can be found at kiwi.bz slash 121b. That'll be out in about a week, eh? I like that. 121b. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, the next show is from Les Crowder. Les Crowder is a, well, quite a famous beekeeper in the top bar beekeeping realm. And let's li- listen to a bit of this interview with Les Crowder. At one point, one of the almond growers said, well, you know, we pay so much for pollination, it shouldn't matter if we kill the bees. <laughs> well, it does matter, doesn't it? Jeez Louise, what are they talking about? Well, this is going to be an interesting one, guys. Oh, he's got some good good ideas and he's got some good uh, new programs coming along. So if you, if you want to hear from Les Crowder, 
and you love the show, please subscribe in your podcast device and the shows automatically or automagically appear on your device, don't they? That's it. And then we, you don't even have to stress to find them because there they are, right there. Exactly. And don't worry, Margaret. Don't worry. I'm not worried, not worried, not worried. If you're, if you're <gasps> driving deeply. If you're driving your car at the moment or you're on your treadmill trying to get your steps up to be your Fitbit friends, we have captured all the links on the show notes for this podcast at kiwi.bz slash 121. So check them out when you get home. Okay, that sounds good. Wow, Gary, that's been a busy one this time, eh? And then we get customers coming to buy suits for their grandchildren and they look so cute. Oh, yeah, eh? little, little Jacko looks awesome mm-hmm. in his new bee suit. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, so weather forecast that said we were going to have rain today. Um, we're looking out the uh, window and there it is, sunshine. So uh, on that note... Yes, we will see you in a couple of weeks with the interview with Les Crowder. So thanks, guys, for listening, and keep the buzz going. See ya. Here's from Paleo. Pa- no. Gary, we're, we're gonna Gary, Gary, it's <laughs> Paolo. It's Paul. It's Paolo. Well, no, he says just call him Paul. So yeah, because Paul. he didn't like us making a Can mistake, I but I call oh, him Poilo. Let's, let's start that again. In the least bit phrased. Phased? Phased. And someone's here. just had a customer arrive. Okay, okay. we will continue on. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. What Red Dragon says. Seriously? Red Dragon? Do you mean Red Dragon? Dragon? Oh, Ridge. Oh, it's my glasses. <laughs> okay, next move. Next Next, next move. story. <laughs> Stronger antimicrobial properties <laughs> than the much-prized manuka honey. Wazzah!